We're back tomorrow. So, uh, that was Fred, and here he is, uh, a stand-up comic. My name's Fred Truman. Good night. I found my name leaping out of the headlines again in 1969 when I went on the board as a nightclub comedian. I had no ambition in that direction, really. I did it because I accepted a silly bet made when I was in a club in the Northeast listening to a pretty poor comedian. I asked the owner what he was paying the man and was amazed when he said... 250 pounds a week. Oh, so I said it was a damn good living for nothing because the stories he was telling were so old and badly delivered into the bargain. The someone who overheard me said, do you think you could do a week up there in front of a crowd like this? I've always found challenges hard to refuse, so I put a bold face on and said, yes, piece of cake. And the bet was piece of cake. I approached the Lipthorpe brothers who owned the Fiesta Clubs at Sheffield and Stockton. And they were willing to let me do a week. They made me a bit of brass too. I had a marvellous time. They thought of a great idea to present me to the audience. Mm projecting a film of me bowling at the audience on a paper screen. Mm. And at just the right moment, I burst through, <laughs> leaving the screen in shreds. People were beer all over their lap. Clerk in the back row got a yeah. right in his face. One bloke, though, made a big mistake. He said, get off, Truman, you're rubbish. <laughs> That's right, he did, yeah. Bit of heckling. And, uh, well, you know, Fred, he didn't like that. What happened? He didn't tell you. Well, we didn't have, like, the cutting one line and put him down with. <laughs> this is what happened. This man was being so blasé into the bargain that I was really furious. And I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried off. There we are. <laughs> Fred, no doubt back sometime next year. Oh, yes. When things get a bit quiet. <laughs> but uh, let's cross... I don't believe the MCC selectors ever wanted to pick me to play for England. Public opinion forced their hand. In 1953, just after I had rooted the Indians, oh, they gave me only one match against the Australian tourists. Yeah. The vital one That's like for all the ashes. <laughs> Meaning when they came to choose the tour side to go to Australia in 1954, I was top of the English averages with 144 wickets. Wow. The most. Here is this is Fred. Here's his mantra. Wonder if Jeff's listening. In the car. <laughs> I got only 238 pounds for two years' work in cricket in the RAF. But I'm not complaining because they were pretty good to me. I'm free to join in on the line. my bank balance up to £2,800, which wasn't bad at 21 for a miner's son from Malby. Mine? Right. I wasn't extravagant with my brass. Although I had begun to take the occasional pint of beer for the first time in my life. Why? Basically, <laughs> because I feel an obligation to do so. There we are. Fred's been fairly upset in recent days, the North-South divide, the state the wickets for fast bowlers in the West Indies, yeah. uh, Len Harton, very upset with him. Uh, but who's he upset with today? Let's find out. By this time, I had changed my sleeping habits. I found that getting up at half past five or six o'clock in the morning, which I had done ever since I had done a spell as a newspaper delivery boy, was no use. By the time a match started at 11.30 a.m., I was half knackered, so I found it a possible advantage to go to bed late and get up late. Right. Being up at one o'clock in the morning just before a match wasn't really unusual. Huh? Hmm. Unfortunately, there was another spot of bother in a nightclub round about the same time ah. when an Irishman and a coloured chap asked if they could share my table. Huh? I readily agreed, but became very annoyed with them when the cabaret started. <laughs> it was the first time I'd seen Danny LaRue. <laughs> <laughs> They started yapping away, so I told them both to shut up until the show was over. At this, the Irishman took a swing at me, so I hit him hard. <laughs> then the coloured man rushed at me. The four waiters jumped in between us and kept us apart. Okay, when one of them called me Mr Truman, this man peered at me and said, Good God, it's not Freddie Truman, is it? I'm from Jamaica, and I'm your greatest fan out there. So we shook hands, split a bottle of champagne and talked cricket while the Irishman still lay on the floor unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> I you can't add trouble, anything to that. Trouble maker, you can't what add anything Danny to that Danny at all. I tell you he wasn't ever bad. Danny on Maru. Mother Kelly's door. He wasn't Shut your enough. mouth. On paradise. I've told you, I'll hit you. Uh, bad. Yeah, it would make him great, wouldn't it? You could make his little like being there. <laughs> it wasn't. Oh, he yeah. wasn't happy, Danny. Well, he right. wasn't. Da he came down came down to Danny and he said, Will you stop all this fuss if love having a fight there during the show? He says, Who's it to you, uh, Danny LaRue? La La which rhymes. Uh, I'm a big fun, but shut it. Uh, oh, so what if you're Fred Truman, love? So what if you're Fred Truman? Well, even if you're a, a female impersonator, there's no one. Worse to say this to than Freddie Truman. Mm. This man was being so blasé into the bargain that I was really furious. And I'm afraid I hit him in the mouth and he had to be carried off. 
What a fantastic story. Yeah, Probably one of the a, best friends ever. That was a great story. You can't be, couldn't make that it up, good. could you, Jonathan? No, that was a great one. It was just on the borders of physical <laughs> correctness. Yes. Yeah. To, tonight, over the, the body, over the body of an, an unconscious Irishman, uh, him and, and, and brackets the coloured chap, uh, just met a bottle of champagne. That's right. There we are, Fred there. <laughs> an insight into the world of Fred in the old days. Yeah.